back to Alexander Library for another weekly program with us with Brittany. Okay, so today I will be showing you guys how to design a family crest, and I also will be giving a bit of background information about coat of arms, family crest, and pedigrees, and why pedigrees are important. So, I have a few notes here today. So, what's a family crest? Um, well, a family crest is simply a, a symbol used to identify families or individuals in a particular family. Now, um, usually it's, it's involved with European ancestry, but I also give you other ways of, um, um, other ways different, different nationalities identify their people groups. So, for instance, Native Americans, they may have certain bands that they wear on their wrists with different um, colors and arrangements to show what type of, um, what certain tribes they're from. And um, even in Africa, um, your Nigeria, the tribe of Yoruba, they have a, um, sorry if I'm not saying that correctly, um, they have their own language. So a lot of, a lot of different tribes and nationalities, they have their own customs which kind of differentiate them from different different tribes and groups within a certain region. Okay, so since we got that, out, got that out of the way, if you're interested in learning your own crisp, please continue to stay tuned. So right here, we have our, our little template. So this is called our sketching. Okay, so this is this little, this little symbol right here. I'll get my notes. All right, so this is our sketching, and you can have different colors um, to represent um, different things you want to represent in your um, coat of arms, such as like uh, if I use purple today, purple shows royalty, justice, and power. Okay, and um, I'm using gold as well, which um, shows generosity, wealth, and youth. Okay. So if you if you know that your family has a coat of arms, or if you're interested in trying to figure out more information about your um, your past, you can always go to Wealthier Clan Library, and we have Ancestry.com there. Okay. So since we got a discussion, let's go over some things that we need to need to um, divide within our family crest. So. We have a sketching, we have a tincture, that's going to be the color, so if you can look here, these are going to be the colors that we have, and the ordinary, so I have, I've already created one, and this is called a chevron, okay, and I also got little notes here, and the chevron is granted to those who participated in Nova Enterprise, so it's kind of like telling a story with a family crest. Okay, you got different colors, so this can signify nobility, um, enterprise, and this is just an example. I don't have a family crest. This is um, to signify enterprise, and the four de lis can um, signify like a French symbol of a French crown and purity. Okay, so that's my figure. All right, so I'll just show you again. So this is our sketching. This is um, this is the shield or the main focal element and achieve and shows an achievement of arms. Okay, so this is a charge. The sketching is a charge, and an ordinary as a division of color. So we have our chevron here that can count as a as a um, ordinary because it's, it's dividing this this charge. Okay, so the tension that's the other color right here color of the actual crest, which is purple. Okay, so I'll show you how to design a chevron and the Florida Lee like I did, but I have some templates available for you to either download or if you're interested in printing one off, just call Alexander Library and let us know.
Right here, we, we've drawn our chevron, and I just printed out another template of our floor de lis. And we have a floor de lis, and well, two floor de lis and a chevron that I just drew with the ruler. So I guess um, I can use the ply list because I forgot to give you one. So you need your template, um, something with a straight edge. You don't necessarily have to have a ruler for anything with a straight edge, maybe like another piece of paper where you can draw a straight line if you want to draw a chevron. And I'm a little challenged in the um, in the drawing department, so I needed a template for my floor to leave. But if you you got great drawing skills, by all means, design it how you want to, and um, create what you want to on it, and sketch how you want it. And you can just put your um, last name here, and I'll show you my finished product. Here we go. So back to the second segment of our video. So we're going to be talking about pedigree charts. And I don't want to confuse you guys today. I just want to give you an idea of how to form or shape a family tree um, so that you can use it at home. But a lot of times pedigree charts can be used to solve difficult problems within families, such as determining whether or not um, uh, parents' children will have a certain type of trait or disease, but I'm not going to um, get too far into that today. I'm just going to show you how you can simply read one for the most part, okay? And this is a um, this is a pedigree chart that I retrieved from Britannica.com. I'll leave a link to it so you can, if you want to study it a little bit further in depth, you can. You'll have the option to do it. Okay, so this is a pedigree chart. And what we'll do is we'll go over the little key or the little legend showing what each symbol represents in the chart. Okay, and this is showing a family. Okay, so the circle will represent a female. We won't worry about normal or carrier females right now. But just know that circles represent females and squares represent males, okay? So you see we have a little Roman numeral right here and the Roman numeral indicates um, a generation. And a generation is just a group of people born around about the same time, okay, for, for the most part. Okay, so. This is our first generation, and we have a female and a male, okay? So between them is a horizontal line, and what this horizontal line indicates is marriage, okay? And bridging down from that line, we have a vertical line, okay? So this is showing that they have offspring from their marriage. We have a vertical line going to a bracket. So my question, I guess, for you would be, how many children does this couple have, okay? So let's follow it along. We have a female, we have a male, we have a horizontal line showing that they have a marriage. All right, we have a vertical line bridging to a bracket. So we're gonna follow these lines, okay? So the first offspring or, or child, and this is showing a male, okay? Follow this line, come back to this point, all right? We see they have another male. They have two sons, okay? All right, following this line, we see that they have a daughter. And following this line, we see that they have another daughter. And this is the second generation, okay? So now that we figured that out, let's follow this, um, let's follow this chart to the third generation, okay? So we have this son, another horizontal line here, okay? So this represents that he has a marriage with, with this female, okay? And then we're bridging down this line to this vertical line here, going to the brackets, okay? How many children do they have, okay? All right, so let's follow it. We have this horizontal line, we have this vertical line, we have brackets, okay? So they have a son, another son, and a daughter, okay? So they have three three offspring, okay, in this third generation. And let's see who else has, okay. We don't see any lines here or here, so that indicates that these two children from the first generation don't have any offspring. And we have 
a daughter here. She has a she has a horizontal line here, so that shows that she has a marriage. And we're gonna follow this vertical line down to these brackets. So how many children do they have? They have one, they have two, and they have three. Okay? They have three children, two daughters and one son. All right, we get another horizontal line here, and this is gonna be our fourth generation, okay? And we're gonna follow this vertical line down, and they have one, two, three, and four, four offspring. So two, two males and two females, okay? And that's just a simple way of trying to, I hope it's been simple, of trying to follow a pedigree chart. Now, um, this can get more complex because as you can see, we have a hemophiliac female and a hemophiliac male, and hemophilia is a disorder where blood doesn't clot properly. And um, this can get more complex to see what people could have the probability in this chart of developing that trait. And um, in more advanced ways, this is how we um, solve problems sometimes medically to see what's the what's the ratio or the chance or the probability of the offspring developing a certain trait. So we're going to get in, into that today, but this is just to give your, your mind an idea of how a pedigree chart works and how you can simply formulate one just to track your family tree. It's a good way of looking at generations of families, okay? So that's all I have for you guys today, and I hope you have a great day. Thank you so much.